Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're going to have a look at how to go about programming some simple C programs in MS-DOS. Not being old enough to experience programming during the 80s and 90s, I found this really good fun. I imagine though for developers of the time, it could be a real headache. This is a simple game I put together using Turbo C using mode 13H. Not a lot to it, but think of it as a game dev hello world. I'll go through some of the resources and tools I use to get this up and running. My first step involved creating a simple setup utilising DOSBox so I could quickly program, compile and run executables. Obviously the intention for any of the programs or games made will be to have them run on native hardware, but it's quite nice to be able to use modern tools for rapid testing. For text editing I just use bog standard Visual Studio code with a Vim plugin, but of course you can use any text editor. Besides an editor, the other thing that is needed is of course a compiler. I managed to find a version of Turbo C++ but not one with Turbo Assembler. This wasn't a problem though, as I found a copy and installed that to my DOSBox environment. I wanted to have Turbo Assembler as inline assembly is very useful, and it means I can use resources for assembly code as well as C and C++. I also set up the DOSBox config file to mount my directories upon startup. It will also set path variables so I can call the Turbo C compiler and assembler no matter which directory I'm in. This saves a lot of time and typing. Obviously, the first thing to do is a test compile of something. Brackeen's website is an excellent source for VGA programming. I'll leave a link in the description. I simply downloaded one of the examples and gave it a compile, then ran it. The other thing to test are source files with some inline assembler. This is a test program I wrote for detecting keyboard key presses and releases. And it works of course, no problems here. So one of the quirks of DOSBox is that it won't automatically recognise new files or disk changes on mounted directories. This is because it only scans for the files and directories upon startup, so anything that is altered after startup won't be detected. You can use the rescan command though in order to force a refresh. Obviously without this you can't edit the code outside of DOSBox without having to restart it every time. The solution to this is an uber simple bat file for rescanning and then compiling. You can see it in action here using DOS's own edit program. Turn echo off, rescan, add the compilation commands, and you're all done. Exit to DOS, compile, and then run. Nice and simple. And just to finish off, I thought I'd show off the Hello World game I made for DOS. No bitmaps, sound or music yet, but still enough to get a feel for making a game in DOS. And here it is running on my old DOS PC. It runs a bit too fast, but I can sort that out later. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short video on my foray into DOS programming. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll provide links to useful resources below. Until next time, thank you for watching.